So in this last video for January, we're going to put together a few different ideas. We're going to do database operations with master detail. We're going to use the live bindings technology. We're also going to use data snap technology to build a multi-tier application. And this time we're going to separate out the database access part from the client part. You saw in the previous video how I used data snap to build a simple client making method calls to the data snap server. This time we're going to put it all together for you. So let's build a multi-tier database application for C++ Builder using data snap and FireMonkey. We'll say file new, FireMonkey desktop application, C++ Builder, and let's give it a, a caption. And we'll save this project out to a subdirectory. So a data snap server uses three components to do the underlying technology to run a data snap server. There's the TDSS server component, the DSS server class, and the server transport. So let's put those three components down. There's our data snap server, our server class, and the transport. And let's connect all of these together. So the server class component works with the data snap server component. And again, the server class, as you saw in the previous video, is responsible for the lifecycle management of the data snap server and the methods associated with it. And the transport and you can have multiple transports, TCP, HTTP, HTTPS, is, going to re is responsible for sending the metadata and data and JSON packets through the transmission protocol. The server transport also knows about multiple connections, whether you have any filters. We also want to add a server module. The server module is where we can put database access components in our server. So we'll say file new, other. In data snap server, there's a server module. And again, this is where using the IAP server interface where we can put database access and it'll use the provider resolver model for passing data sets between servers and clients. So we'll create that. It's just an empty space, basically a data module where we can put our data access components. If we look at the source code underneath, it's just uh, waiting for us to do something. So we can go and we can add database components, so let's put down a SQL connection, and we'll connect this up to our employee database as before, so we can get at customers and orders, for example. Make sure it's all okay. And let's put down a SQL query component, and this is going to go through the SQL connection, and the SQL string is gonna be select star from customer. Now we need to provide some data and metadata. So we'll put down a T data set provider and T data set provider's job is to provide the metadata and data to the connecting client data set or in my case to the connecting uh, client uh, data snap application. And it's gonna get its data from a data set. And we'll also put down a second query for our sales table. So where the customer number is equal to some parameterized so that I can relate the two customers to each other. Let's just make sure these queries work. That one's good, that one's good. And let's call this the customer query. And this will be our customer data set provider. And another provider, and this can be our, our sales data set provider. We'll name the sales query and the sales data set provider, and it's gonna get its data from the sales query. Let's go back to our main form. We have the server class component, and it has an event handler defined called get class. And in this event handler, we need to set the persistent class equal to the class ID of the name of our server module, which is called TDSS server module one. It's the name of the class. And since it needs to know about this unit's interface, we've got to go up in the source code and include the header file for our server module unit, which is called the CPP server module unit dot H, which defines this class TDSS server module one. So just to recap, we have our data snap server with a database connection to my employee interface database. I've got the customer query, select star from customer. I've got the data set provider, which is gonna provide metadata and data from my data snap server to my data snap client. I've got the sales query, and the sales query is select star from sales, where the customer number in the sales table is equal to some parameterized customer number colon customer, which is going to be provided for in the relationship between sales and customer. That way, as I move through customers in my client, it'll fire and get records for the sales for that customer. So the where clause will allow me to only get customer orders for that customer. And we're done with the server side. 
it's set up to provide database data that can be updated and to give the metadata and data to the client. Let's, uh, let's try to build and run it. And we get this uh, Windows firewall saying this application is trying to use a port, in this case, port 211. We'll say allow access. And here's our data snap server running down here. We can go back and create the client application now. So add a new project. This is going to be a C++ Builder FireMonkey desktop application. And we'll name this our C++ Builder database data snap client. All right, we'll put a SQL connection component down. We'll set the driver to data snap. We don't need login prompt set. Look at the parameters. The default is localhost. That's where my data snap server is running. And port 211, that's the TCP IP port that I have connected over on my data snap server side. We can make sure we can connect to it. Let's add a checkbox. We're going to use the checkbox to connect and disconnect from the data snap server. Connect to data snap server if that's checked. And we'll hook an event on chain and we'll say, that the SQL connection connected is equal to the checkbox one is checked. Next, we need to add two data snap provider connections. We'll call this one the customer provider connection. And it takes a SQL connection, which is our data snap connection. And we have to give it the server class name. And the server class name is that server module, which has the database components in it. We'll put that server class name in. TDSS server module, and we try connected, and it's good. We'll put down a client data set for our customer data, and we'll call this the customer client data set. It's going to talk through that data set, data snap provider. And we can now get the provider name. Remember, we in our data snap server, we put two different providers, the customer and the sales data set provider. So for the customer data set, we'll put down a data source for that customer client data set. And the reason we need to do this is so that we can provide the master detail relationship in our client application for the same relationship that's over on the data snap server between customers and sales. And then we'll put down another provider connection, this one for the sales data. So we'll name this sales data snap provider. Again, it goes through the SQL connection component and it's that same server class. And we'll put down a client data for the sales data. So here's the sales client data set. And it's going to talk through the sales data snap provider connection. And the provider name that we want in our data snap server is the sales data set provider. Now, remember, there's that master detail relationship back over on the server module between the customer query and the sales query, that the sales query having that where clause with the parameter. And that's the reason we provided this client data source. So to make the relationship between the sales client data set and the customer client data set at runtime through the con provider connection, we need to set the master source, which is the customer data source over on my client. And we need to set the master field, which is custno, and the index field, custno. That way, when I move on the client side from customer to customer, it'll refire the query to get me the right orders for the customer. Now we're going to right mouse click, bring up the live binding wizard to link a grid to a data source. Let's just use a regular grid. And the first data source we want is our customer client data set. And we'll add a navigator. And a binding list gets generated and a bind source DB1 is generated, connected to the client data set. If we activate the client data set, and we see the data live at design time. We can also bring up the live binding designer and take a look at all of this. So the checkbox is just used for activating the SQL connection. And we've got our data source and our navigator connected to the bind source DB1, which has the client data set data for a customer. We've got our sales client data set here. Let's right mouse click, bring up the live binding wizard. We're going to link a grid with the data source. Again, we're going to use just our T-Grid. In this one, we want to bind it to the sales client data set, and we'll have a navigator. And now, with our bind source DB2, we've got a grid and a navigator. And if we visually look at it, let's move the client source DB2 and the navigator. And here's our bind source DB2. 
if we activate the sales data, then we get the data associated with the orders for the customer that's selected, in this case, customer 1001. And we get all the columns that we can uh, use and we could prune those if we want to. Let's now run this application. And here's our client data set with the customer data and the orders data for customer. And as I move along, you'll see that I'm only getting the orders. Now I forgot to add some code for the checkbox to activate these two client data sets. They were active because I left them active. So let's go back and deactivate the client data sets. And let's go to our on change event checkbox. And down here, we're just going to say customer client data set active equals checkbox one is checked. And the same thing for sales client data set. Make sure it's active or deactivated depending on the checkbox status. That way when the checkbox happens, we can activate and deactivate everything on our client. Let's run the application. Nothing is active. Activate and connect to the data snap server. And now as I move along, I'm getting the data only for each of the customers that I'm currently on and look at their sales. So in this video, we showed you how to take apart a master detail application that's all running on one computer and put the database access in a data snap server written in C++ and then build a thin client talking through TCP IP from the data snap client to the data snap server running down here. We could also deploy these clients to Win64 machines and OS 10 computers. The only thing for OS 10 we'd have to do is add deploying the Midas Dilib because we're using the client data set. So that's putting it all together. Database access, live bindings, data snap multi-tier, FireMonkey, Windows, Mac, 31 videos in the 31 days of January. Thank you for coming along for the ride. Take care.